My talk will be about MapSwipe, and I always like to ask that question first. Who of you has already heard about MapSwipe? That's great. And who of you already contributed? Great, even better. Okay, so hopefully the rest who did not already contribute just come out afterwards. We have a short demo session as well, and they can also get the app. All right, so, but what I want to present today is like insights into the app and also into the data quality that's coming out of the app because, yeah, that's really interesting how useful it is. And so just for those of you who haven't seen it, so MapSwipe is a mobile application and it's designed to classify satellite imagery. And the task that we've been working on most is finding buildings on imagery like this. So, and every time you spot a building, you just tap on your screen and indicate, yes, there's something. So it turns green. If you tap twice, you can indicate, oh, maybe, I'm not sure, maybe this is a building. But you can also say, oh, no, here's no imagery at all, or there are clouds, by tapping three times. So... This is the app. The app was developed by MSF within the Missing Maps project, and we are going to hear about it more in the next presentation. So, um, yeah, maybe just to clarify two things. When I talk about tasks, I always mean these tiny little squares. And then I will also talk about groups. And groups is what you will work on. It's like a session of tasks. So you start mapping these six, then you swipe to the left, and six new tasks will pop up, and in the end, you will somehow reach 100% and upload everything. And these tasks put together as one group. So like, just to make this clear, because the next slide, I will refer to these words again and again. All right. So why are we doing this? So we had the problem of how we would like to find all these buildings in huge areas, but most of the times they are also sparsely populated. So it's like really scanning through areas where there are no buildings. And to do this faster and faster, we tried out the map swipe approach. So we have a huge area of interest, generate these tiny little tasks, and then have this crowdsourcing approach. And every task will be evaluated by many people. So at the moment, we have at least three different people looking at everything and saying, oh, yeah, there's a house or not. And in the end, we can aggregate everything and derive a settlement layer, for example. So then we have like the aggregated information, like just one layer, easy to use, and showing us where people live. So that's the goal, and that's the workflow here. But now the question is, how good is it? And we did a case study. And so we chose two projects from MapSwipe. One in Madagascar, the other one was in um, South Sudan. And this is also just to give you a brief overview of how these projects look like. So they cover quite huge areas, so that's more than 6,000 square kilometers, um, resulting in 1,400 of these groups. And that's, in the end, about 1 million contributions by the volunteers. And for this project, about 850 people helped us. So that's quite a huge amount of people. And we chose another project from South Sudan. It somehow has a similar size and also a similar number of user contributed. And what we are interested in is now, how good is this data? So because, as you may know, people are not experts in looking at satellite imagery. They don't have a GIS degree or geographer. So they're just people like you and me, and that's also good, but that's why. <laughs> 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 and that's why we want to know how good is this. <laughs> All right, so now a bit more technically. Mm, we looked at how people agree on, on their, their answers. So that's what the inter-rater reliability is about. So we have this group, and we look for, okay, how is the inter-rater reliability. And what we can see is that, all right, there, for many groups, it's quite high. So like more than 0 0.5 is a value where we can say that's a good agreement. But also, like that's somehow present for both projects. Like if we have 
1.0, also agreement of one means total agreement. Everyone said for each task the same thing. So that's really, really good, but also rarely occurs, of course. And, but still we have some of the groups where we have really a low agreement. And we wanted to understand why is that? So, and even for the South Sudan project, this is even more present. So, in an ideal case, we would like to like, yeah, cut down this portion here and add it somewhere here. All right, so mm, let's see at two maps. So that's maybe the first time you, well, when you contribute, you can also see like how the data looks like really, like not only these tiny squares, but everything put together. So green means good agreement. So the areas where it's green, we, we are really happy about. So people are saying the same. And this is the indicator of good quality as well. So we analyzed that before as like, when people agree, we can almost be 100% sure that they found the correct answer, that there's a house or not. If they don't agree, that's also for us difficult to handle. We don't know what to do. So, so let's have a look at these pattern. And maybe the first thing that we can see is that they're not random. So they somehow tend to cluster. So that's what also these Mo and I indexes saying that it's not a random distribution of disagreement, but it's clustered. So there are specific cases where people disagree. And so, for example, we have these now north-south bands, but we have also something maybe here from east to west. And now we're asking ourselves, oh, what are the reasons for this? And we did a bit more um, like to get out the proportions of disagreement. So for Madagascar, we had really the most disagreement cases were between no and bad. So some people said, no, there's no house. The other said, that's bad imagery. And this was the most of the times caused by clouds that are, were present in the image, imagery. And people didn't know what they should do now. Is this like, is there no house? Or is this like bad imagery? And so this already gives us a good understanding of what we can do better in the future. And maybe to address this, then we could also get a higher agreement and better quality. Mm. The same, like, it's a bit different for the South Sudan project. Here we have a really high disagreement between yes and no. So this may be caused because the houses that are present in the imagery, they are maybe really difficult to spot. They are maybe wound, they have a similar color than the ground, and that's why there are some people who are able to spot it and others they aren't. And what we would like to do to improve this is maybe to give better guidance, provide better tutorials so that it's easier to classify these kind of satellite imagery. So this is what we learned from the South Sudan task. Mm. And what we then also see, we have now the, these different cases mapped again here and what we see is that also these patterns are associated with different kinds of disagreement. So for example, these north to south bands, they are almost every time caused by missing satellite imagery. So if we spot something like this, we know what went wrong. And that's good because then the next step we can address it directly. So it's not, not, not a miracle for us anymore. Also these east-west things, they, they are mainly caused by individual users who unfortunately did it wrong. And most of the time that happens like just after beginning your first map swipe tasks and soon they get better, but still it's present in the, in the data and we need to get rid of that part. <laughs> All right, so next steps. So we ha I presented the analysis for two projects. At the moment there are more than 50. So 55 projects are already completed I think three or four projects are active, so we would like to do the analysis for all projects because they may differ between these projects. Um, at the moment, we only look at agreement among volunteers. We would like to add further parameters to have estimations on the quality. And that's also something I would like to do, like update the tasking in MapSwipe dynamically. So when we notice that there's a Low, dis, uh, low agreement, let's do it again and again, add more people, have, have more people looking at it because that may increase the quality. But if we already have a high agreement, 
then we can just finish it and say, okay, that's cool. Yeah. And finally, something that, of course, many of you maybe also heard about is that there are many good automated approaches to detect objects and images. And we would like to try to combine data from map site with these approaches to then improve the quality again. Because that's what we want. We want to be really sure that our settlement layer is correct and that we don't miss information. Yes. So thank you for your attention. Have a look at the website where you can find all these indicators that I presented to you. And yeah, thanks. <laughs>